Hey everybody, it's Dr. Weber. Uh, we're going to take you through your first ever virtual health and fitness camp. So let's go ahead and introduce ourselves. Uh, I'm Dr. Weber. I'll be leading us through this camp this week and uh, today we're going to go over mobility. Okay, so today is our Mobility Monday. Day one. And that's a huge accomplishment because you've initiated your fitness and health journey. And we're going to help you through this. We're going to give you assessments. And we're also going to help you learn what mobility is. All right. So we're going to learn about mobility today. This is Mobility Monday, day one, 7 a.m. And now, if you want anyone to join us live in our live Zoom chat, we have people in our live Zoom chat. We're here live on Facebook, and I'm also going to be posting this on YouTube. So you can access this. I have accessible links. So wherever you find a link, just comment if you want information about about the participation uh, survey uh, registration form I can send that out and we have a presentation slides folder that updates you with calendar information the schedule the links the logon information and also all the access to the archive videos so this uh, class that we're learning today is inspired by Many of the strong adaptive physical education leaders out there, like uh, Monica Lepore and uh, Amy Lieberman and uh, Justin, and uh, well, everyone in the field, Sue, and all of us who have, you know, been in the field for a long time already, who really respect the uh, word physical education and really bringing us new versions of uh, physical education, which are really just better versions. Better versions meaning that we're adding inclusion, we're adding uh, individuals with disabilities, and we also wanna make sure that this curriculum is not overlooked or overshadowed at any public school system. So advocating for it to be a uh, curricular grade in the uh, academic learning uh, outcomes. So let's go ahead and get started with mobility. Monday, 7 a.m. Every week for four weeks, I know it's Memorial Day, I know you're just waking up, but guess what? Gotta move each joint through its full range of motion every single day. You know when you go in the back of your car and you feel like something's pulling in your shoulder? Well, we're gonna do stuff like that that's going to actually teach you how to move in and out of those ranges safely to prevent injury. And now why is that important? Uh, because it's one thing to have somebody pick your hand up. It's another thing to be able to pick your own hand up. So that's the difference between, between flexibility and mobility. I can pull my knee and hold it as high as I can and hold it, but as soon as I let go, I have to hold it actively. So this would be passive mobility. This would be active mobility. Same goes if I put my leg on top of this bar and stretch it out. From here, what I can do is lift it off, actively pressing my foot into the ground. Now I'm practicing mobility. So if we stretch, we also have to learn that we have to own those ranges and move into those ranges and move out of those ranges. So we're gonna start with our daily morning mobility routine, which is called the morning cars routine. <clears throat> the morning cars routine is a very important thing that we can do every single day. And when you watch the YouTube video later, or if you're watching the YouTube video later, I'll make sure that this is nice and clear for you if you're watching live. 
but we want to do the morning cars routine every day. What do cars stand for? It stands for controlled articular rotations. What does that mean? Basically what we're doing is we're taking each joint through its full range of motion, creating a circle. So notice that I just made a circle. Okay. So if I were to make that circle with my arm, here's my body and I'm making that circle up and then back and then around. What I'm doing is I'm trying to create a circle. Okay, with that arm, right? So I'm creating a circle, but I'm controlling that circle. So you have to think about control. Okay, so you're actually controlling that range. And what that also means is that when I move my shoulder, I don't wanna move my, my back. So notice that I'm rotating my torso Kind of cheat to open up okay i also don't want to bring my head forward make it look like i can get my hand over my shoulder but really it's here okay also i don't want to bend my elbow and cheat okay like that so we're thinking about control we're thinking about flexibility this is when flexibility is important Flexibility is a prerequisite, or flexibility comes before mobility. So you have to have flexibility first. So if you have flexibility to come up here, then you can also control that area as well. But we need to add some strength. And that's what our morning cars will do, is we'll work on our mobility. So this is our active range of motion, okay? So we're gonna take each joint through its full range of motion. How many joints are there? There's 11, okay? And I'll put this board right here. You might not be able to see it, but I'll have a checklist. And we'll start with the neck. Then we'll go to the T-spine. Then we're gonna go to the shoulder. Then we're gonna to go to the scapula. Then we're going to the elbow. Then the wrist. Then the hip, knee, ankle, toes, and patella. Okay, we can also work on seg segmentation of the spine. So we're gonna work on each of these components, and then we're gonna rate, our rate ourselves from one to three. Okay, and then we're gonna put some notes here. Any notes is gonna be our quick little assessment. So if you can't see that and you're on the live, I'll uh, make sure I create a YouTube a link or a video that can show that pretty well. And I'll also have some Google Docs for the participants that are signed up. So if you're signed up, you'll have access to these assessments. Okay, so we'll start with the head and neck. We'll work our way down our bot. We'll work our way all the way down. So we'll start from the head and neck and work our way down. If you can't use one of these 11 major joints, um, then what I'd like you to do is either repeat another or write in a comment section, uh, I, hey, uh, what is an adaptation for this position? Or uh, right now, write, write me a message and say, need options for shoulder, or say, uh, no knee mobility or limited ankle mobility. Give me some notes to where you're at to work around that. Now, what's really important before we start is <clears throat> safety. If anything hurts when you're moving, if you feel any pain, discontinue the exercise. No reason to get injured at home, and uh, we just want to use about 40% effort at most doing these exercises. This 
video and these videos are here to educate you and then for you to progress on your own. So progressing the intensity, time, type, and, and so forth with these morning cars that we're going to learn. And then we're gonna progress each week. So make sure that you tune in next week because you're gonna get more information next week. And then each day is a uh, progressive unit as well. So when you uh, come to class tomorrow, you'll go through the morning cars probably real quickly, or at least a couple of them before we do our dynamic stretch and our Tabata workout. Okay, so tune in tomorrow for Tabata Tuesdays. And today we have our morning cars on Mobility Monday. And one, we want to talk about safety. Two, comment and chat. So today in all of our days in camps, whether you're here live in our Zoom chat, whether you're going to watch us live later on YouTube, or whether you're here on Facebook, I want you to comment. I want you to say what's up. I want you to share this. This is 24 days, so 24 days challenge. Remember that, 24 day challenge. Get excited because this Memorial Day, you've been waiting for something to kind of motivate you or inspire you to do something different. You've been doing the same things repetitively for too long and it's time to change. Start with your morning cards. I promise you, if you do your morning cards every day until today, until next Memorial Day, next Memorial Day, you'll be emailing me, messaging me, like, oh, so glad I did what you told me to do. Those morning cards, I did them every single day, 365 days, and guess what? I have more control, I have more flexibility, and I have more strength. That's what you're gonna say. You're gonna say all these three things. Now, why do we want control? Well, Dr. Spina says, independence before interdependence, or what we want are independent actions. If we're able to create independent actions, everything works interdependently better. So if we work on the parts, some of those parts are gonna work better together, okay? Now that's not to say, we need to go into the gym and focus on bicep curls or tricep extensions and say that <clears throat> we just need to work on our elbow. We want to work on every joint possible. Toes, fingers, our thumbs are getting worse from swiping. Our fingers and our wrists uh, take a brunt of injury from doing too many push-ups or mountain climbers or burpees or handstands, so our, our hands and wrists um, aren't doing too well. Our elbows, you know, I'm not speaking for everybody, but if you're a baseball player or if you throw a lot, you know what I mean. You've taken a lot of uh, brunt with the elbows. Shoulders, many people, um, you know, that I know have dislocated their shoulder, have shoulder labrum tears, uh, back and spine, the number one injury, right? Everyone talks about how back pain is the most prevalent of all, you know, disabilities. Uh, and then you think about people who have disabilities, either physical or cognitive or social, that limit them from physical activity. And those people in your community, those are the people that you want to reach out to if you're a gym owner, fitness facility, and say, hey, we got a program for you, X, Y, and Z, and if you need help opening that type of program, I can help with that, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and get started with our neck. Our one to three scale here is a pain, tightness, or limited control factor. So think about control, flexibility, and strength as your three markers, which would give you three points, okay? When we write a one to three in the column next to the neck, what we're gonna do is think, do I have good control or does my whole body move? Flexibility, do I have good range or is there some tightness? 
and then strength. Do I feel any weakness? And if I feel weakness, I'm actually going to negate a point. So that's how that scale works. Okay, so let's we'll start with the neck. And I'm not a functional range assessment uh, practitioner. I am a functional range mobility specialist. So we're going to go ahead and start with the neck. What we're going to do is we're either going to stand or kneel, just like I'm kneeling right now. So you can stand up like this. You can sit in a chair. I'll get my box. So I'm going to do a lot of different types and variations for different individuals. So if you have questions, let me know. I'm going to go ahead and look at questions now before I begin. Looks great. All right. Let me know if you have any questions, okay? Otherwise, I'm going to get started. All right, so don't worry about the board. I'll take pictures of the board if you're watching live. And if you're on YouTube, uh, my YouTubers out there, you'll see this uh, in a better view. So we're gonna start with the head and neck. Again, I'll have options seated. I'll have options standing. I'll have options kneeling, okay? So as many options as you need. And again, I'm looking for the comments. So when you, when you write a comment, I'll look forward to uh, answering that comment. And then if you want to say hi to your friends that are in the Zoom chat right now or who are on Facebook Live, share your information. All right. Remember, safety is number one. Comment and chat is number two. And three, this is a 24-day challenge. So that if this is your first day. Thank you for joining us. And here we go. All right, we're going to start with the head and neck. So whether you're seated, standing, or kneeling, we're going to squeeze the fists and push the feet into the ground if you're seated, if you're able to, or squeeze the fists, keep the core tight, squeeze, squeeze your stomach, squeeze your obliques, squeeze your lower back, stand up nice and tall. Bring your shoulders all the way up, and then bring your shoulders all the way down. Hold here, squeeze your fists. Take an inhale through your nose, fill your belly, fill your obliques, fill your lower back. Fill all this area up like a 360 degree balloon. Think of a balloon expanding. Imagine this area right here, a balloon. So we're gonna inhale, and then exhale. So imagine your diaphragm that is here is the core of the core. Okay, is the core of the core. Think about that. The diaphragm is the core of the core. So diaphragm is a muscle that goes all the way down in here, obliques, up and in, around and back. It's, it's a hollow muscle. Okay. So when we inhale, we're actually pushing that diaphragm down so that our lungs can get more air. And then when we exhale, the diaphragm pushes up to help get the oxygen out. So when we inhale, we don't want to inhale in our chest, and we don't want to inhale that fast through our mouth. We want to inhale slow through our nose or slow if you have to through your mouth, very slow. Or if you're practicing breathing, you can perform very fast inhales and exhales, but that's for another day. So when we inhale, go ahead and inhale, inhale into your belly, rib cage, oblique, obliques and back, 360 degrees like a balloon. Hold it and exhale. And now for each control or each circle that we perform in our controlled articular rotations or our morning cars, we are going to make sure that we are squeezing our whole body 30%. What we're going to do is a radiate. So we're going to pretend that when we move the circle or our neck, when we move our neck, we're going to pretend that we're moving through mud. So very slow, okay? 
we're going to try to make sure that our whole body is still, that we're not moving our shoulders. You can be seated, standing, or you can be kneeling. And we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay, I'm going to show you different versions each time so you have good options for each exercise. So let's start with the head and neck. Squeeze the fist. Sit up nice and tall. Whole body is squeezing about 30% effort. We're going to inhale, let the diaphragm lower. And then we're going to bring the chin down. Rotate the neck. Look over the shoulder, bend the neck. Look back. And over and up. Look over the other shoulder. We're drawing a circle with the neck. Look over the shoulder, look down. And then we're going to flex the head down. One more rotation all the way around. Look over the shoulder, behind the shoulder, up. Try not to move your shoulders all the way up toward the sky. Look over your other shoulder. And scrape the chin across the collarbone. Let's go the other way. Rotate, bend, ear dips. Extend the head and neck back. Rotate, look over the shoulder. Flex the chin across and look down. Keep rotating, look over the shoulder. Bend the ear into the shoulder, extend back. Rotate, look over the shoulder. And flex the chin down. Okay, let's go ahead and rate that. If you have someone that's watching you, they can rate it for you. Communicate, comment. Give me a one to three comment and if you're in the Zoom chat, if you're in the Facebook and you did that, just write down one to three how that felt. For me, I'm going to say that's like a 2.5. I felt pretty good. I'm not going to say it was perfect, but I didn't feel any pain, so I felt strong. I didn't feel limited in my range, and I felt like I had pretty good control, but maybe the control was a bit of an issue. And perhaps strength and flexibility, but I would have to have somebody else watch me, or I'd watch this video over. So we're at about 2.5. Let's go with the T-spine. What is the T-spine? The T-spine, or the thoracic spine, starts at about your neck to about uh, mid-level through your thoracic abdomen here, okay? So T1 to T12. So you have your C1 to C7, then T1 to T12, and then L1 to L5, and then you have then you have your sacrum and coccyx. So your coccyx is your tailbone. Okay, that's the those are fused bones at the end of your vertebrae, and so your whole vertebrae actually segments one vertebrae at a time. If you hinge or if you put all the weight distribution into say your lower back, which many people do, if you watch people do an overhead press they begin to immediately extend their lower back. And what happens is their lower back is becoming their shoulders. And you don't want that because it's going to build an area of muscle and tissue in that area, and you're not going to be able to segment. What that is going to do is going to uh, provoke back injury. So making sure that, one, you have good shoulder range if you're doing overhead presses, and two, um, you're not using your lower back. So we'll talk about the lower back at the end, but we're gonna get into the T-spine now. So the T-spine from T1 to T12 is what we're going to try to control. So you can do this standing. You can do this seated. So if you're standing, you bring your hands across your chest. Kind of spread the floor apart with the feet. Give yourself a hug. And then we're gonna flex down. Rotate, bend, extend back, rotate, bend, flex forward. Keep rotating, bend, extend, rotate, bend, and flex down. Let's go the other way. Flex and rotate, extend. Rotate, bend, flex down. One more. Rotate, bend, extend. Rotate, bend, flex down. 
So if you were kneeling, same thing. If you were seated, same thing. And to go over that one more time, watch my upper back here. Notice that I'm not bringing my whole body forward. It's just the upper back. And then I'm going to rotate. So you can do this seated or standing, orb, kneeling, bend, extend, rotate, bend, flex down. So when you're seated, it's actually better because when you're standing, you tend to kind of twist the hips. So you kind of twist the hips. Okay, so make sure that when you do that, you're twisting over those hips. You're using just the upper back, okay? So go ahead and scale yourself one to three. I would say, oh, let's say another 2.5. Scapula. Okay, again, you can do any of these seated from this position, from this position, or from this position. So any will do. So I'm going to show you different positions each time just so you know that you can modify all these positions. For the shoulders, or for the scapula, which is our wing bone, which would be right here and here, okay, is responsible for those shoulder shrugs that you see people do, make weird faces, All right? So what we're gonna do is control that scapula using our CARS technique. What does CARS stand for? Comment in the box if you remember what CARS stand for, okay? All right, what we're gonna do is go ahead and keep our arms straight. We're gonna pretend that someone just gave us $200, $200 bills. We're gonna put one between our left elbow inside and one on our other side, okay? Or if you have a marker, you can do that. I'm gonna put it right here. I'm gonna squeeze it tight. All right, maybe I can find something else in here. So if you have something at home, you could use a pen, you could use a cloth, because what's gonna happen if your arms go away? It's gonna fall, so that's what we want. So we're gonna keep it nice and tight. We're gonna bring our hands down. The rule is the fingers can go up and down, but they can't go off the pants. So we're gonna go up, back, down, Forward, up, back, down, forward, up, back, down. And now we're going to go up and back, forward, and down. All the way down, back, up, forward, and down. All the way down, back, up, forward, and down. Relax, okay? So that was our scapula. You can do that kneeling, seated, standing, or sitting on a box, which is great. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I really like all these. So for the scapula, you can also bring the hands out in front of the shoulders, like you're a zombie. Squeeze the fists. And then we're going to do the same thing. Forward, up, back, down. Forward, up, back, down. Try not to bring the head forward. Try not to bend those elbows. Straighten them. Let's try it again. Back, up, forward, down. Back, up, forward, down. Up, back, and down, forward, up, back, and down, and forward. All right, so what are we measuring? Comment in the box. If we, in our Zoom chat there, comment in the box if you think it was your glenohumeral joint we were just moving or your scapula. Okay, and then, we are going to 
rate ourselves. So based on our control, flexibility, or strength, let's go ahead and rate. I would say my control was a, I give myself a good credit for control, flexibility, not that much, and then strength, I say point. So I would say I'm just gonna give myself a two for that one. Okay, we actually skipped shoulder, but we're gonna come back to it. All right. Shoulder or glenohumeral joint. So if you put scapula in the box in the comment box, good job. Now we're gonna go to the shoulder, which is also called the glenohumeral joint. Try to say glenohumeral joint. Just trying to say it is crazy. So your humerus, which is your upper arm bone, goes into your scapula, which we were just moving, okay? And that makes up your glenohumeral joint. Your glenohumeral joint has a lot of range. It, makes a, it creates a full circle, okay? Now notice that when I did that, I opened up my chest. So I had to use my chest to make a shoulder movement or a glenohumeral movement. So what I'm gonna do is, in a chair, you can do this standing as well, okay? You can do this kneeling, like this, okay? Or you can do this seated. I'm gonna show you it seated. <coughs> now if, <coughs> sorry, if you need extra assistance, you can always hold on to a dowel or push your hands into a wall. So if you had a wall in front of you or a dowel, that can also help with some of the control, okay? Also for this one and for others is if you have a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball in the house, you can hold on to this during this movement, okay? And this might help with some of the control factor, okay? Now, we use these tools, and I'm introducing them to you kind of slowly, but we use these tools to create more tension. And why do we want more tension? Because we want more control. Why do we want more control? Because if we have more control, then our brain is gonna help us build new tissue in that area we're asking it to. Then, if we have the flexibility and strength, we won't have to worry about whether or not we're gonna get injured one day in a weird, really weird position because we practice those weird positions like this every single day. And that's ultimately gonna make us stronger and give us more mobility. So that's why we use some of these tools to create more control, flexibility, and strength or mobility. Remember, safety is first. You always want to make sure that if anything hurts or is painful that you stop doing it and just maybe observe, comment, say, sit in this one out. Um, maybe encourage somebody in our Zoom chat right now, okay? And then 24-day challenge. I know I've said this a couple of times, but this is our first video, so I have to put it out there that I'd really like you to continue this for 24 days. All right, here we go with the shoulder. Squeeze the ball. If you have a dowel, push down. If you don't have a dowel, I just want you to squeeze your fist like you're holding onto a dowel. We're gonna flex up and hold. And then from here, we're gonna turn the ball out and turn the bicep forward all the way. And then from here, we're going to extend and hold here. Keep turning that ball backward as you reach back. Keep internally rotating or turning that ball back. So when we end up to the side, the back of the hand or the palm is facing out. From here, we're gonna reach back. We're gonna unwind the shoulder. Reach toward the back wall. Reach toward the back corner and over top of the head and forward. Let's try that one more time. Flexion, reach overhead, turn the shoulder out, reach back, keep turning the shoulder so the ball is facing out. 
If you don't have a ball, just squeeze your fist, it's fine. Extend, unwind the shoulder, reach back toward the corner, toward the ceiling, and then forward, and then switch. So I'll show you a version while you're standing. So people that are standing and doing this, or kneeling, this is what it'll look like. Okay, flexion. Reach, as I reach back, I'm going to turn my bicep or turn that palm out. Reach back and make a full circle with the shoulder. And then I'm gonna reach back, unwind, squeeze the ball, push the dowel down or push your hand into the wall. Or if you don't have a dowel, it'll look just like this. Same thing, flexion, internal rotation, all the way to extension, create that big circle, then extend, unwind, reach over the head, up toward the sky, and down. So that would be the shoulder or glenohumeral joint. Now again, you have if you have access to uh, the lacrosse balls or the dowels, all, all I've done is um, taken this off of a broom. So um, you could also maybe do that if you have a broom, if you have any type of ball, you should practice those glenohumeral or shoulder cars as much as you can. Those are very important. All right, so I'll give myself a two. You can write yourself as well. Okay, now we're gonna go into the elbow, standing or kneeling. I'm gonna go with kneeling this time. I'm gonna extend the elbows. Let me see your palms, okay? And then from here, we're gonna bend the elbows, turn the palms down and out, and then extend the elbows or push all the way down. Palms up, bend. Turn the palms down, extend, and then flex again. Turn the palms up and extend. Turn the palms down, bend, and turn those palms up and extend. So that would be your elbows. You can also do that with your arms teed out. So go ahead and try that. Tee out your arms, bend, turn the palms, extend. Turn the palms, bend, and then just extend. Good, okay? So the wrist, we're gonna bring those hands in front of the elbows, and then we're gonna point those fingertips down. Let me rake that elbow real quick. I'll give that a three, okay? And now for our wrists, bring those fingers down. Point those fingers down. Hold here, and then when we move our fingers, try not to move your elbow. But just try to move your fingers here. So hands are in front of the elbow. We're gonna draw circles with our fingertips. They'll go in, and then up, up, and out, out, and down, all the way down all the way in and up, up and out, all the way out, all the way down. Let's go two circles the other way, down and out, all the way up, all the way in, all the way down, one more, all the way out, all the way up, all the way in, all the way down. Good job. All right, so making sure when you're doing that, if there's any pain or discomfort, Go around that or discontinue, comment and chat, ask questions, and remember 24 days. Here we go. Go ahead and rate your wrists. I'll give it a two. Now we're gonna get into the lower body. Now, if you don't have the ability to get into lower body positions, comment in the box and let me know, and we're gonna get started in about 15 seconds. So any comments about Good morning, good morning. Any issues with lower body? 
So if you have any lower body concerns, let me know in the box. So we're gonna go into the hip now. So if you need some water, get some water. <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and work our way through our lower body and then we're almost done. So the hip, you can do this standing. You can also do this seated. So option one, this is what I want you to do, is straighten the leg and I want you to turn the whole foot, knee and hip all at the same time inward. You're gonna feel this tissue here, the internal rotators of the hip turn on. So we're turning that whole leg in and hold it for five, four, three, two, and one. And then foot and leg will go all the way out. Now you're gonna feel in the external rotator, squeeze it here, five, four, three, two, and done. So that would be internal and external or in and out. That's all I want you to do if you're not able to get down to the floor or if you feel like that's your safest option. So that would be option one, safest option. Option two, you can pick up the leg, push into your chair or box, turn it in, and then turn it out. Okay. We call this internal rotation here, and then we call this external rotation. Internal and external, or if the individual isn't able to do that themselves. If somebody can help them hold here and then hold here, as long as there's no pain. So we're just going in and out. Option one, in and out. Option two, option three, standing, kneeling, or sideline. So if you are sideline, you're gonna want a pillow or a ball, so I'll just use a ball here, or a pad. I got some boxing pads I can use, or a pillow, whatever you wanna use. So for the hip car, if you know what car stands for, go ahead and comment that. It'll be on the pillows here, or a yoga block, or a ball, any cushion here. And what we're going to do is, if we still have that lacrosse ball, we could even use a rag, a washcloth, put it behind a sponge, anything really, a deck of cards, put it behind that knee. And we're going to use that to create more radiation. Now, radiation, remember, when we're performing this circle, we want strength, flexibility, and control. So radiation means that our whole body is squeezing as we perform this control articular rotation or car. Okay, so remember that. Remember to irradiate every time we do these. Okay, so what we're gonna do is hands together. I'm gonna have this rag behind my kneecap, feel position. I'm going to bring the knee to the elbow, open the hip up. I'm going to bring that foot toward the back wall and then I'm going to sweep that knee around and make a full circle. And then I'll bring my knee next to knee. And then I'm going to extend. Bring that knee up toward the sky and all the way forward. So that would be one rep. Okay, let's go one more. Out. Turn that foot back and around. Forward. Back. Up. Around. And back to start. Let's go ahead and switch positions. Bring this behind the knee. If you need to just turn over to the other side. Okay, get back in that fetal position to start. Put that rag behind the knee. From here, knee to knee, we'll bring the knee up to the hip. Knee will go up toward the sky, turn that knee toward the back wall. Create a full circle and knee to knee. And then sweep it back, out and around, up and forward. Knee to knee, up toward the elbow, out. Turn it all the way back, sweep it to the knee. Bring the knee back, sweep the knee out, 
all the way up toward the elbow and down. Good job. Okay, for the knee, whether you're seated on the ground or standing, I'll show you three different versions. Okay, so if you have a dowel or a broomstick, what you can do is hold on to it, bend one knee, turn the foot out, extend, turn the foot in, and bend. So that'd be your standing version. If you're seated, it would look something like this. You could use the dowel as well, which would actually be really helpful. Extend, turn the foot in, bend, turn the foot out, extend. Okay, you can also do this on your back. Okay. Turn the foot out, extend, turn the foot in, bend, out, up, in, down. Okay. And you can do this sitting up just like this. Okay. So there's many different ways you can do a knee car. Now I am going to do it seated, show you that it can be done in a good position in a seated fashion. So we're going to push into the box and bring that knee up and bend that that knee as much as we can try to get this heel to the glute and flex the foot from here turn the foot out extend turn the foot in bend out up in down in and up out down in up out down okay let's switch legs i'll do this one on the ground if you're on the ground you're going to pull that hamstring up Extend, turn it in, down, out, up, in, down, and then we'll go in and up, out, down, in, up, out, and down. Okay, now for the ankles, if you have the ability to move your ankles um, and you're seated, then you can hold on to a dowel and go like this. You don't need a dowel, you can push into a wall or hold on to, um, push into a box or a chair if you're seated. If you're standing, you can go like this, okay? If you're on your back, you can go like this. And if you're not able to move your ankles, maybe somebody can move your ankles for you for this one, okay? So I'll do this seated. I'm gonna straighten the leg, point the toe down. Toe will go out. I'm going to draw a circle with my toe. Out and up. Up and in. In and down. All the way down. All the way out. All the way up. And in. In and down. Now all the way down and in. Up. Out. All the way down. In. Up. And out. Okay. I'll show you a version. On your back now, let's do the other foot, or you can copy me, point the toe all the way around, full circle here. All you're doing, whether you're seated, standing, on your back like me, or even sitting up, pulling that leg, you're just trying to pull, you're trying to create a full circle with that ankle, drawing a circle, exploring the space. Good job. Now, if you remember, go ahead and rate those. So we had the hip, knee, and ankle. Hip, I would say was at like a two for me. The knee felt like a two, and the ankle also felt like a two. Okay, remember, we're looking at control, flexibility, and strength, how much control, how much range, and how much strength is in that area, okay? Those are the three factors we're looking for. Now we're gonna move to our last three, so we're almost done. Okay, toes, patella, and segmentation. So toes, so whether you're standing or seated, so if you're seated and you can move your toes, that's great. If you're standing, you can stand up just like this. You can hold this if you'd like. And you can also do this and challenge yourself and do this in a squat position, but that's for more advanced. So from here, what we're gonna do is bring all the toes up off the ground, hold here, and breathe 
if you're not able to get your toes up off the ground or somebody can help you, they can pull your toes up off or just stretch those toes up toward the sky and hold. Five, four, three, two. Now dig those toes into the ground or curl those toes into the ground or have somebody curl those toes for you. Push down, hold here. Three, two, one. Now from here, just the big toe up toward the sky, small toes down and hold. Five, four, give yourself a thumbs up. If you can't move your toes, move your fingers, thumbs up. And switch, thumbs down, small fingers up. Or if you wanna be like me and do both at the same time, it's even harder, hold here. And now from here, pinky to big toe, all the way down, pinky to big toe. Try it again, pinky to big toe, or pinky finger to thumb. Ready, pinky to big toe, one more, pinky to big toe. Now all toes up, all toes up, but try to keep the midline of your foot and the outside of your foot down, the whole foot is down except for the toes, all toes up, separate those toes. If you can't do it, have somebody help you. Now from here, just tap your big toe down, or if you just have hand access, just tap your, Thumbs down, ready? Thumb or toe, two, let's go for five, three, four, and five, good job. All right, so I'll give us a two, maybe a 2.5 there. I definitely feel some issues in my left toe. For your patella, you can do this standing, seated, or sitting on the ground. I'll show you the three options. Sitting, you're gonna straighten your leg, make sure the leg is relaxed, and we're just gonna push the patella in a full circle. Okay, this would be an easy easy way to do it. It's be a little bit harder to stand and do it, but you can. And then another good option is to bring your back up against the wall or a box. Lay your leg out like this. And what we're gonna do is bring the fingertips behind the knee, thumbs on the sides of the knee. And we're just gonna push it side to side. Or the middle of the knee and the outside of the knee. We're just gonna push the kneecap side to side, up and down. It should be able to move freely. If it feels weird or if you don't, if you want to skip this one, that's fine. If it doesn't move, then remember, we're gonna mi minus a point for flexibility. If we can't control it or if we can't push it, we'll lose a point if we can't push it. And then strength, if it feels like painful or weak, then we'll lose a point for that. But that's all really good and important stuff to know if that's your case. So let's go ahead and switch side. And that's why we assess each range in each joint. We wanna know how much control each joint has. Remember, it's really important when we move our ranges that we're able to move them independently of the other joints that surround it. If we're able to do that, then we're able to have better joints. And if we have better joints, the joints will work better together. Okay, so that was the patella. Remember the patella, is the only one where we have to be totally relaxed. So if you couldn't get your legs relaxed and you couldn't move your patella, that might be something that you might want to write in the comment box or um, email me and we'll talk about that one if you had issues with that one. For me, i say about 2.5. We got some stuff going on, but not too much. Segmentation is our last one. So you can do this uh, seated if you're in a chair like this around your back or if somebody can help you reach forward and hold and then we're going to articulate with the low back mid back upper back and neck and then low back mid back upper back head and neck so this is spinal flexion and extension segmentation or you can just call it cat and cow right cat and cow so let's start with cat if you're seated you're going to do exactly what i just did if you're on the ground like this, you're gonna get into quadruped position, around the back, tuck the chin. Spinal flexion or cat. Push into the ground, push forward with the hands, push back with the knees and feet. Really use all of your energy to push into the ground. If you're holding on your knees and you're seated in the chair, it'll look like this. Okay. So wherever you are, hold. And then we're gonna segment from the low back, lumbar, remember, the coccyx and sacrum, 
or the tailbone. And then the lower lumbar or the low back, mid back, thoracic spine, upper back, head and neck. Look up. <clears throat> and then back down. We'll start with the tail. Low back. Mid back. <clears throat> <clears throat> Head and neck. Good. <clears throat> and then remember, <clears throat> I think I got like a peanut in my throat. <clears> throat> Hold on a second. <clears throat> That's what happens when you put <clears throat> some peanuts in your ice cream. All right, chopped peanuts. All right, so <clears throat> that was segmentation of the back. How much control, how much flexibility, and how much strength did you feel? Did you feel like you were all over the place? Were you able to segment each vertebrae? If somebody was watching you, maybe they can help assess you. I'll give myself a two. Okay, so every single day, morning cars, do these in the morning. It took a long time today to teach, but after you do it every single day, it should only take about 10 minutes. So in future weeks, you'll see next week, we're gonna go through this a lot quicker, okay? So don't be discouraged if you felt, if you felt like there's too much time or energy. You kinda have to put time and energy in something that is going to help the world change. Remember, if you want there to be positive adaptations or positive growth, you have to put in the work. 365 days from today, I guarantee, if you can do this with 365 morning car routine, you will benefit beyond your belief, okay? So control, flexibility, Strength equals mobility. One is safety, comment and chat is two. Three is our 24 day challenge, okay? Remember, you just completed day one. I wanna thank you, congratulate you, I want you to share this, and I want you to challenge yourself. Can you complete all 24 days, okay? Uh, can you complete the bottom Tuesday? It starts tomorrow at 9 a.m. Or workout Wednesday at 11 a.m. Health talk Thursday at 1 p.m. Friday is fitness Friday at 3 p.m. Saturday is 10 a.m. sports Saturday. So you can come log on to our Zoom chat. You can see us in our Zoom chat room. You can register for camp. I can uh, send you the survey registration form if you haven't signed up yet. And if you want to be a part of future camps, you can always just message me, I'll send you that information. Now, if you can, make sure that you share this, and then also be aware that we have assessment forms. So if you want assessment forms uh, that you can use for Google Docs, you can send it to me. I can give you feedback, and I can help you individually. If you were like, hey, when I was moving my wrist, I had some major issues, we can talk through that. So make sure that we're chatting, we're communicating, Safety first. Hopefully we'll see you tomorrow for day two. Um, really look forward to it and I, won't, I appreciate everyone that has watched this entire video. And we will see you tomorrow. Good job, thanks a lot.